an unusual sight these days. Marching men. Soldiers marching all over the world. The airborne infantry also marches, but not far this time. They're plenty tough, trained for action anywhere, ready for it any time. On the ground, they can take care of themselves and the enemy. But in the air, these men are dependent on the flight crew of the troop carrier airplane, with a good share of responsibility resting on the pilot and co-pilot. For the success or failure of a mission can depend on getting these troops to the proper place at the proper time. Handling the C-47 skillfully comes only from a thorough knowledge of the characteristics and performance of the airplane. Take a good look at this man. There was a day not so many weeks ago when he was a transition pilot. A day when he first started to learn the do's and don'ts of flying the C-47. Let's go back to that day. Here's Lieutenant Warren, a few weeks younger and a lot greener, but not too green. He knows enough to realize that the best insurance against accidents is to know his airplane. That's why he's checking on the crew chief. Tires checked for blister cuts, proper inflation. Hydraulic brake lines checked for leakage. Warren has been taught that there's more to his job than just sitting down in the driver's seat. A good half of this flying business takes place long before your wheels leave the ground. Look her all over, Lieutenant. They say it's easier to check on the ground than in the air. Here comes a man who will agree with that statement. Warren's instructor, Captain Matthews. All set, Lieutenant? From top to bottom, Captain. Okay, let's go. Mind if we go along, Captain? Maybe we can pick up a few pointers. We want to see what a transition pilot learns after he's through with his groundwork. Lieutenant, what's the first thing you do in the cockpit after checking Form 1A? Flip on the battery switches. Wrong. The first thing you do is adjust your seat so that your eye level hits the center of the windshield. Now those battery switches. Landing gear next, sir? Right. Latch down and lock. Check. Pressure up 500 pounds. Check. Neutralize landing gear and flap levers. Check. Light green. Check. Horn operation. Here it is. Check. Autopilot hydraulic valve. Off. Check. Fluid level? Okay, sir. How's the fuel supply? Left main 200. Right main 200. Left auxiliary 100. Right auxiliary 100. Total 600, sir. Good. Let's take the quadrant column now. Move the prop pitch controls back and forth to be sure they're free. And leave them full forward. The same applies to the throttle. Leave them one quarter open. And the mixture control. Return to idle cutoff. Elevator tabs should be neutral. Oil shutters in proper position. Put carburetor air temperature controls in cold position. That's to prevent damage to the induction system in case back backfiring occurs on starting. Set aileron. And rudder tabs at zero. Turn autopilot off. The ice is off. Parking brake on. Move cross seat valve on. Right, sir. Move static selector valve to top. 
Double check your gauge by setting your altimeter at field elevation. Uh, tap the altimeter to remove any friction. Check your tachometer and airspeed indicator for zero reading. Check your clocks. Now test the flight controls. Make certain that your rudder pedals are even and adjusted to you, and that you have free and maximum movement of the rudder Elevator. An aileron control. Look out the window to see whether your aileron is moving. Right, sir. Check flap indicators for up position. Engine cow flaps open. Yes, sir. Now we'll go through the starting engine check. Ready, sir? If the engines have been standing in excess of one hour, they should be pulled through by hand with the switches off. Part. However, Major Krebs had this plane up less than an hour ago, so we can proceed accordingly. Left engine tank selector, left main. Right engine tank selector, off. Propellers in low pitch, throttles one quarter open, mixture control in idle cutoff, carburetor air cold, main ignition switch on, left ignition switch closed. Raise the fuel pressure to approximately 10 pounds per square inch with a wobble pump and keep it at that pressure. I'm going to start the left engine. With a fuel pressure of 10 pounds, momentarily move mix control out of idle cutoff position to rich. This facilitates priming. You then operate the starters by moving left starter switch and safety switch up to start. When the starter has reached speed, pull down on both switches. Right there. Mesh.
Opening closes and throttles gradually. So never accelerate the engine fast enough to cause damage to your gear train.
to zero. Neutral. Bottle back to 35 inches manifold.
control set to auto rich. Tom flaps in trail position. Hydraulic system to good engine. 
of just power so that RPM is increased by 100 for every two inches of manifold pressure used above 30 inches. Use minimum power required. If more than maximum rated horsepower is necessary, put prop control in full low pitch. I notice you keep the plane at about 120 miles an hour. That's the recommended cruising speed. During single engine flight with any appreciable power being used, control can't be maintained below 85 miles per hour. Best results are obtained if the fuselage is held parallel to the line of flight. What's the reason for dropping the wing on the live engine side three degrees? Because I want to counteract the skidding effect of the rudder board. This attitude produces minimum drag and maximum cruising speed with a given power. Catch on? Yeah, I get it. But to keep all that stuff in your head, you sure have to be a walking check order. Or a flying one. But don't worry, Warren. When you get on of it, you'll be able to feather a prop or adjust to one motor in a matter of seconds. Ah, but there are about 20 steps to go through. All right, figure a second for each step. It took me longer just now because I was explaining it to you as I went along. Here, I'll unfeather the prop and show you what I mean. In unfeathering, with throttle closed and drop and decrease, you switch the ignition to both. Check. Make sure mixture control is in idle cutoff. Turn engine fuel tank selector to desired tank and push the feathering button and hold until the prop windmills to between 600 and 800 RPM. before we can taxi. RPM to cool the engine below 180 degrees centigrade. I know the next step. Reach for 418. I noticed you kept the 
flaps down after contact with the ground. There's two schools of thought on that. But some pilots spill them. I leave them down to serve as an air brake. They also help to retard the forward roll. That was the first day for Lieutenant Warren. His introduction to the C-47. He came to know that ship a lot better in the days that followed. Got to know the inside of that cockpit so he could reach for every control with the familiarity of a skilled carpenter reaching for his tools of trade. He came to know and trust those instruments on the panel in front of him as real friends who, when understood, can help make flying the C-47 more of a pleasure than a job. Yes, piling up those necessary hours of transition training taught Lieutenant Warren many things. Safety in the air and on the ground became a matter of habit. Little things like checking to see if the crew chief had locked the rudder, elevator, and aileron became important things to this man, whom so many others would soon depend upon. You remember where we first met him. Let's put him right back up there, in the cockpit of that C-47 where he belonged. He and his co-pilot, twin custodians of the lives of these men. They've got to be good, these pilots of the Troop Carrier Command. They've got to be good to fulfill the command's motto. He conquers who gets there first.